Center for Global Futures in San Francisco. Joining me now, James Canton. Dr. Canton, you know, I, let me ask you, you've made so many predictions, so many correct predictions, so I'm curious as to where we are right now from, let's say, predictions you made about robots just 10 years ago. Absolutely, Charles. We are in the midst of a accelerated revolution where AI, robotics are changing every part of our society, our culture. They're even taking us to space. They're helping us achieve amazing things. I just read a report yesterday about uh, an AI that helped figure out how to create a new line of cancer drugs right. that avoided humans couldn't even do this. So yeah. we're living in a very exciting time. It is exciting, but that also segues us into jobs, right? We know there's gonna be destruction of jobs and then the creation of jobs, but people are panicking, right? Because I remember it wasn't long ago, we told truck drivers, don't worry about it, learn how to, learn how to code, and that didn't work out too well. <laughs> no, it, it didn't, you're absolutely right. Uh, you know, as with every technology wave, and as I talk about in my, in my books, the, this innovation economy, remember, there was a time when people didn't use computers, they didn't have the internet, they didn't have mobile commerce. So AI and robotics is a natural evolution of this innovation economy, if you will, which can, creates jobs, creates opportunities, creates new kinds of businesses. So we have to learn to adapt and, and get educated and retrained as humans to be able to deal with these new tools, and AI and robotics represents this, as I said earlier, right. it also will help us do things we never thought about doing before. What about, you know, in the play, you know, it's, a, it's just remarkable, this play was written in 1920, just how uh, prescient it was, and, and, you know, the part about these robots being used to fight wars, there was one headline, I think, in the, in the story, it was maybe Portugal or Spain were the, were, were the person in charge use it to crack down on civil disobedience. They killed 700,000 people. What, what, what do you see with respect to the delicate balance of using these robots for wars and policing? Well, you know, you put your finger on what is one of the key concerns I have um, in my, my talk, which is the future of AI, uh, the promise, the peril. Uh, we need to learn to control AI and, of course, robotics before they control us. But simply put, if you're dealing with an ideology, a political ideology, where you're repressing or oppressing citizens, right. uh, this will then, these technologies will reinforce that. If right. you're dealing in, in democracies, liberal open democracies like we have in the U.S. and around the world, it will be used for science, education, and hopefully not used to oppress. So that's going to be our challenge. It's going to face the civilization, our civilization, and determine our future. I got less than a minute to go, but I do want to pick up on determining our future. Right now, the wealthiest nations in the world are in the midst of a, a fertility crisis. It blows my mind. We're the only species on this planet that are really allowing ourselves to die out for some reason, and the wealthiest among us well, a, uh, how will AI play into that? Because it feels like in some ways it could exacerbate it. Well, f low fertility uh, is something that's inevitable. Uh, we, it could be due to affluence. It could be due to China's one-child policy. It's, it could be used to lack of, uh, let's say, support, people not having a future or hope. But I think that uh, uh, AI... We need to shape AI's future so it helps us, for instance, create new uh, economic opportunities, new companies, new, new, if you, if I told you that we were going to be looking to go to Mars or go to space or right. transform ourselves to enter the universe, new companies, new startups like Vast or SpaceX, or you know, talk about all the innovations. I'm positive about us shaping our future, but we need to take control and guide that future for the betterment of humans to be able to control AI, robotics, and of course, all these fantastic new businesses that will create new investment opportunities and prosperity on the planet. I gotta tell you, because I'm not looking forward to robots being a new Adam and Eve, I can tell you right now. Dr. Canwell, thank you very much, appreciate it.